I'd like to talk about the different um, concepts that I have for temperature. First concept has to do with uh, black body radiation and one of the equations is power over area is sigma t to the fourth. And the other equation is uh, Wien's law which is uh, basically that the temperature is inversely proportional to the wavelength 2.9 times 10 to the negative third Kelvin per meter divided by the peak wavelength. These two, def these two descriptions are both uh, these two, two properties called Stefan's law on the left and Vine's law on the right are based on an object having the following properties. The object must be opaque, which means that it's not transparent, it's not letting anything through, and the object must be black, meaning it's not it's not reflecting any light. Furthermore, the above form of Stefan's law, this sigma t to the fourth, represents a body in a vacuum, which is a transparent zero Kelvin environment. Now, a more uh, a more general form of Stefan's law would be power over area equals sigma times t to the fourth minus t sub naught to the fourth, where t sub naught would be is the temperature of the environment. Now, a more general description of temperature has to do not with the radiation, but with the average transverse kinetic energy. It is related to the root mean square of the molecule's velocities, in particular the transverse velocities, which differs from the rotational velocities. Some molecules store a sizable portion of their energy in rotational and vibrational modes. Now, what does root mean square mean? Well, each of the molecules is going to have a different velocity going in all different directions. And what you want to do is take all of those velocities, square, square them first, then sum them, divide by the number of molecules. That would be the mean. You add, add together the squares, and then sub divide by the number of molecules, and then take the square root of that. That's what root mean square means. Now, I don't remember the exact equation, so I'm looking it up. Root mean square speed. Um, here's the equation that VRMS is equal to the square root of 3KT over M. It's given two different forms here, 3RT over the molar mass and 3KT over the individual molecule of the mass of the molecule of the gas. I believe I can show that these two equations are exactly the same. By pointing out that the molar mass, uh, the mass of a whole mole of atoms, is equal to Avogadro's number times the mass of a single atom or a single molecule, and also R is equal to K times n sub a, I believe. So how would those work? Okay, so I've just plugged both of those into this one: square root of three k n sub a t over m sub m is n sub a m and you can see just crossing out the factor of n sub a gives you 3 k t over little m this is generally um, more useful because we're usually given uh, how many grams a mole of the particle is in the periodic table for instance and we're also given how many uh, we also know R is 8.31 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. So in any case, let's solve this for T. We would square both sides. V squared equals 3RT over M. So multiply by M, M over 3R, three, 3 capital R, and we will get T. Better yet, let's use this formula, which is m v little m v squared over 3k equals t. Now, this is 1 half, let's multiply this over uh, 1 half m v squared divided by uh, 1 half 3 halves k. So the temperature is equal to the the average transverse kinetic energy in the gas divided by three halves k. Now there might be um, there might be other forms of 
kinetic energy inside the gas. For instance, carbon dioxide is going to look carbon dioxide is going to have a carbon in the middle and two oxygen atoms on the side and it may spin or vibrate and and so it will store energy other in other forms such as vibrational or rotational but those other forms do not manifest themselves as temperature only the transverse kinetic energy um, manifests itself as temperature now, this body might be completely transparent. It does not have to um, emanate light like in the black body. It doesn't, it doesn't have to at all obey um, Wien's law and Stefan's law because unless, unless it is actually, uh, what is it, opaque and black, um, you could have a transparent object that, that completely lets light through and does not and does not uh, emanate any light, but it still has a defined temperature because it might conduct uh, temperature to other um, bodies in the area, or rather conduct heat. Okay, so thermodynamic temperature is a little different. At this point I'm going to do a little bit of name dropping. First thing I'm going to mention is the equipartition theorem which states that for any bulk quantity of a substance in equilibrium, the kinetic energy of particle motion is evenly distributed among all the active, i.e. unfrozen, degrees of freedom available to the particle. So here in this animation, all of those particles have available to them several different degrees of freedom. They can rotate, they can vibrate, they can um, and move translationally. Now imagine um, counting every possible every possible microstate of this system that you uh, that has a certain particular energy. In general, if I add energy to this system, then more possible there are more ways that this uh, molecule could be moving. Now, if you want to, if you actually count all of the possible ways to uh, that this um, molecule could be moving, um, the measure of that, the number of ways that it could be moving, is called entropy. In particular, if W equals number of ways that it could be moving, then S the entropy of the system is k sub b, uh, I'm going to have to check this, natural log of w. I think this is right. And in order to verify that is right, instead of looking up entropy, I'm going to look up Boltzmann's epitaph. Yes, here it is, Boltzmann's epitaph, s equals k log w. Now, I can't remember historically exactly how that got onto to his headstone, but it basically says that entropy is a measure of the number of ways that uh, that a, a molecule or a system could be vibrating. And here is a, a definition of temperature, which is the temperature is the change in heat added to a reversible system divided by the change in entropy. Now this is an awkward equation because in general um, things are like, well this s is the independent variable and the, uh, and the heat you add to the system is a dependent variable. That's what would be indicated by the way this is set up. Um, but I need to change my mindset. So thinking about if this is a high temperature um, if we have a high temperature, then dQ is going to be much greater than dS, so adding a whole lot of heat causes a very small change in entropy. So we've got, so um, usually in calculus, this would be the independent variable and this would be the dependent variable. But here, we got, we got it more like the heat is the independent variable. So in this case, I'll just put independent variable and I'll cross out that there. We can change the heat and it will affect the entropy, the number of ways that the system can be. Um, at a high temperature, adding a whole lot of heat causes a small change in entropy. 
at a low temperature, adding a little bit of heat will cause a large change in entropy. So we could have a working definition for an infinite temperature, and this is something that probably will never happen in, in any system, where adding heat causes no change in entropy. So you're adding um, energy to the system, but um, it does not become any more chaotic. It doesn't uh, have any more modes of it doesn't have any more modes of motion available to it. Now, um, this video on Vsauce lists 141 times 10 to the 30th Kelvin as the highest temperature possible because of this, because he figures out that the peak black body spectrum um, radiation is 1.616 times 10 to the negative 26 nanometers which is equal to one Planck length. Notice that 26 plus 9 is 35. So this is the, so the relationship between nanometers and meters. Now the Planck length is defined from three fundamental physical constants, the speed of light in a vacuum, Planck's constants, and the gravitational constant. Now I want to emphasize there is no, currently no proven physical significance of the Planck length. So you can't really say uh, you can't really say that this is the shortest uh, wavelength possible. Now I feel it's highly speculative and almost uh, it, I think it's kind of unlikely, but um, opinions may differ. Uh, the Schwarzschild radius of a particle is defined as the, the distance from a gravitating body. Um, at which uh, the speed of light would come to a stop. And they use this, um, a particle of mass m has a reduced Compton wavelength of this value. First of all, we're dealing with a photon here, so it doesn't actually have a mass. But um, if that photon had a mass, and you tried to fit that mass inside a radius of uh, well, let me put it this way. You can calculate the energy of the photon that it would have an energy of E equals hc over lambda, where you got Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. And convert that, convert that energy to a mass using E equals mc squared, so that mass would be equal to that energy E equals hc, hc over lambda, um, divided by c squared, which would be h over lambda c. Then we want to calculate the Schwarzschild radius of that um, mass, which is this. Our, sub, our Schwarzschild is 2 gm over c squared, and this is the radius where that mass would become a black hole, um, would, be, would be represent the surface of the black hole. So we're going to take that 2g over c squared and plug in that h over lambda c, h over lambda c, and get 2g h over c cubed lambda c equals the Schwarzschild radius of the thing. And if that wavelength is on the order of that, of that Schwarzschild radius, let's just... Um, treat them as the same variable and multiply by lambda, we'll get lambda squared equals 2gh over c cubed. Did I? I screwed that up. That was c squared there times c. So this is, so if I take the square root of that, I get 2gh over c cubed. And it looks like they got square rooted h bar g over c cubed, except for a couple of minor, or, well, I don't know if they're minor, but a couple of constant effects. I've got the essential uh, calculation right there. Now, um, I think that the biggest problem with this calculation is treating the photon as though it has gravitational mass. So, for one thing, if you have a photon that's moving along and it's uh, got a wavelength, say, of one nanometer, well, that is based on how fast the observer is going. If you if I am traveling really, really quickly that way, I might see a wavelength of 0.01 nanometers or 0.001 nanometers. In fact, um, 
there's no limit to the amount of of uh, rapidity. There's no limit to the amount of rapidity that I could be traveling this way, and there's no limit to how short I might see that wavelength. So if if um, this thing turns out to be a black hole to somebody moving with a rapidity of of a billion, then it would have to appear as a black hole to everyone else as well. Now, now I think there are some people that would argue that um, rapidities of a billion just don't happen, and essentially nothing in the universe moves that fast. But, um, but I think uh, anything that is possible is possible. But it's impossible to have um, a uh, you know, a photon like suddenly becoming a black hole in one reference frame, but not becoming a black hole um, from the perspective of some other observer. So, so I would say there's no way that a photon is limited to a Schwarzschild radius in this situation. Um, there's no way that the energy of the photon has gravitational mass. So, in any case, going back to something that I think is accurate. Um, that somehow this definition of temperature, that the temperature is equal to the average transverse kinetic energy divided by 3 halves times Boltzmann's constant, is actually the same as this definition of temperature, that the amount of heat that you needed, need to add to a system divided by the amount of entropy that is added to the system when you change that heat in a reversible process um, is equal to the temperature. Somehow those two definitions are equivalent in the in that those conditions where you have some transverse kinetic energy. Um, and this also is consistent somehow with with these definitions of temperature uh, based on an opaque object that transmits pure thermal radiation. This this definition, even though it's really hard to understand, and I'm not sure if I understand it entirely either, is the one that, that rules the other two. And in that environment, I don't know whether this is possible or not, uh, it should be possible to have a situation, or it might be possible to have a situation where you can add heat to a system without it affecting the entropy at all. In those conditions, that would represent an infinite temperature basically a divide by zero situation here.